Hello, welcome to the first video in a series on multiple regression. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a scatter plot matrix uh, using Excel my 2007. Uh, we're actually not going to run any regression in this video. This is a preliminary analysis. When you have multiple predictor variables, we would like to see how each of these predictor variables relates to the response, and in addition, how they relate to each other. So we're starting off simple here. I have some data I collected a few years ago. This is uh, my pulse rate data. I walked on a treadmill for 30 minutes. At the end of each minute, which I call a period here, I changed uh, some treatment combinations, how fast I was walking, speed, in miles per hour, ranging from 3.6 up to 4.8, um, and then incline on the treadmill. So at the end of each minute, I would uh, quickly measure my pulse rate and then change my treatment combination according, according to a prior randomization I had done before doing the exercise. Okay, so we have uh, three variables total. Actually, time is a variable too, but we'll ignore that in this analysis. Uh, incline, is we'll call that x1. Speed is x2. And then my response, pulse. I want to see how these variables affect my pulse rate. Okay, so Besides doing descriptive stats, which I won't do here, uh, and uh, maybe dot plots or histograms of the data to see the shape and uh, the distribution, uh, we want to look at the relationships between pairs of variables. So we'll do that first. Um, I'm going to make a scatter plot out of incline and pulse. So I start uh, selecting the incline data. And then from the bottom here, I select up, but I want to skip over the speed data. So I press on the control key, highlight up from the bottom, and I've selected those two columns. Go insert, scatter, and there we go. And that'll require some cleaning uh, as usual. So I'm going to make the plot square. I'm going to move it down and make it smaller also. Let's move it down here. Make it smaller. Okay, I know that the incline values, which is this axis, ranges from 0 to 8, and it goes up by an uh, incline of 4. So I'm going to change this. Right click on the x axis format. I want to start at 0, go up to 8 by increments of 4. And then the pulse rate um, ranges from about 110 up to maybe 1. Uh, 50. Let's try that. Right click, format, 110 to 150 by increments of 10. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what I see here is there's a slight positive uh, increase. Uh, as the incline increases, so does my pulse rate, but there's a lot of variability going on. Uh, part of that variability is due to the lurking variable speed because I was changing the speed. So we can't see how speed is affecting things here. But it's actually increasing the amount of variability going on. Okay, let's uh, make a scatter plot between speed and pulse. Insert, scatter. Okay, and I'm going to clean this up. And I'm going to paste that scatter plot right here. And then I edit it so that it's the same size and shape as the other scatter plot. Now I like to use the grid line shown on Excel as a reference. On uh, sizing here. Trying to make them exactly the same size, so close enough I think. Now speed ranges from 3.6 up to 4.8. This is the speed axis. Right click, format. So 3.6 up to 4.8 by increments of 0.3. There we go. And again, this is the y axis. Right click, format. And that'll be 110 to 150 by increments of 10. Okay, one more scatter plot to make. I want the scatter plot between incline and speed, the two x variables. Okay, and I'm clean.
cleaning that up. And let's cut that out and I'll paste it right here. And they made it a little too big apparently. Now, there are faster ways to do this uh, editing, but I don't want to take the time to explain that now. Um, Again, right click format. This is going from 0 to 8 by increments of 4. And for the speed, the speed axis here it goes from 3.6 up to 4.8 by increments of 0.3. Okay, now I could also edit these points, you know, make them different shapes or colors, but this is fine. Uh, so this is my scatter plot matrix, but I'm not done yet. I need to put in my labels. I know that the y-axis in these bottom two graphs represent my pulse rate. So I'm going to uh, put a label right here. I'm going to merge these two cells and just call this pulse and maybe bold face it. And then right here, I'm going to merge all these cells and uh, let's call this, uh, <laughs> this is the speed factor. Okay, now speed here represents the y-axis on this scatter plot, and it represents the x-axis on this scatter plot. So this is pulse versus speed. And I can see a stronger relationship than pulse versus incline. Again, but there's lurking variable. Incline is a lurking variable in addition to other variables. Okay, then this last one, I'll merge this. And this is my incline variable. So now I have my labels for the scatter plot. And uh, personally, I like to get rid of the axis values here. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on the Y axis and hit the delete key. The X axis, hit the delete key. Same thing on these other plots. We know that going to the right is increasing and going up is increasing. And that's all I really need to know here. I'm more interested in the strength of the relationships and the direction rather than the, the values here. Okay, so based on this I have a scatter plot matrix. Notice uh, another thing that speed versus incline looks like there's no relationship. And I did that on purpose. This was a designed study. I had control over the values of the x variables. So I chose them to be uncorrelated with each other. In addition, I randomly assigned the treatment combinations, the incline and speed, to each minute of my treadmill walk. So this made a design study, and uh, we'll, si we'll find out later that when we run a regression, any significant results can be attributed to these uh, factors and not other lurking variables. At least that's our, that was our hope. Okay, so I'm going to end here. This is our scatterplot matrix.